Hey guys, welcome back to another something in about five minutes. This week we are tackling cardiac asthma, so let's get right into it. So I'm sure you guys are saying, Turek, what the heck is cardiac asthma? Cardiac asthma is a symptom, a respiratory symptom of a cardiac problem. It is not a disease process on its own, okay? That is pivotal to understand here, okay? First, we need to talk about left side heart failure. So guys, if you haven't learned about left side heart failure, I implore you to go check out this video on the Medic Materials YouTube channel. It talks all about left sided and right side heart failure and breaks down left and right completely. The link is in the description of this video. All right, guys, when we're talking specifically about left side heart failure, we're talking about a left ventricle that's flabby, right? It's lost its ability to contract properly to be able to pump blood out of the heart. So this blood backs up through the pulmonary vasculature into the lungs and it collects here in the alveoli. And that's why I drew this alveolar diagram. Okay, you have the bronchi, the bronchioles getting down into the alveoli sacs. Now, within the lungs, it's an S, there is an estimated 600 million alveoli. That is crucial, right? There is a ton of alveoli solely because this is where the gas exchange happens. We've known this because we've covered it before, okay? But now you add fluid, right? I'm going to use blue here so it makes a nice magical, uh, you know, uh, pre, you know, picture in our brain. But you have um, fluid collecting within these alveoli. Right? And eventually, these alveoli are going to fill up with this fluid. And diffusion is going to be gone because this gas exchange can't happen through this fluid. So what's ultimately going to happen is the body is going to say, yo, this needs to stop, and it's going to literally cut off that alveoli sac. Okay, But how the heck does it do this to protect itself? Because that's all it's doing. It's protecting itself almost like... Uh, you know, a good general would sit there and go, those troops are lost. Sorry, fend for yourselves. You're cut off. I'm not even going to get you. We're going to protect the troops that are still able to perform their duties. And that's what the body's doing in, in its own right, is it's protecting the alveoli that still can function. These healthy alveoli that aren't fluid filled yet. Okay. So say, this one's cut off, okay? This one's now starting to fill with fluid, right? The body is now going to sit there and it's going to start bronchoconstricting this bronchial, okay? It's going to start narrowing that bronchial to the point where it closes and that's where it cuts itself off, right? It constricts until it closes. So when you have this bronchoconstriction, you get wheezing, that, right? Wheezing, because air going through a constricted bronchial within the lungs causes wheezing, right? Cardiac asthma is symptomatic wheezing and or some coughing. So people call it cardiac asthma, but it's not really a disease process on its own. It's a symptom of the causing of left-sided heart failure within the lungs, the pulmonary edema, right? So this fluid fills the alveoli, constricts the bronchioles to protect the, uh, the healthy alveoli, and then you get the wheezing, okay? That's why it's cardiac asthma. So this is, you know, similar in the bronchoconstriction to regular asthma, but completely different in the pathophysiology on why it's caused, okay? So we need to be very careful in our assessments and when we see someone having wheezing, we always need to do a thorough assessment to make sure this isn't a cardiac caused uh, wheeze, but it's a respiratory or asthma, COPD, or some other lung type um, disease process that's actually causing this wheezing. I need to talk to you about treatments here because most providers would hear wheezing, right? And they would go, oh, I'm going to open up that bronchoconstriction with a bronchodilator like albuterol 
or some paramedics would even be inclined to give a duoneb treatment or albuterol and atrovent, right? Something to open and to dry the lungs. However, if you are just giving a duoneb or a simple albuterol nebulizer, you're going to cause what's called flash pulmonary edema. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up all of those constricted bronchioles and you're going to release that fluid out into the rest of the protected alveoli, right? Causing more fluid buildup within the lungs. This is going to increase shortness of breath, increase the struggle and work of workload of breathing. It's going to decrease oxygen saturations and it's going to put you well behind the eight ball in helping out your respiratory patient at this point in time right? The only way that you can be able to give a bronchodilator is if you also are giving positive pressure ventilations. Now, the two ways that EMS typically can do this is with a bag valve mask or CPAP, CPAP or BiPAP. Both work effectively depending on your area and what you use. If you are giving positive pressure ventilations, you're pushing that fluid down into the bottom of the alveoli into the vasculature and into where it needs to be not in the air air spaces of the lungs but in the vasculature where fluid belongs right only then can you give that bronchodilator so you're not flashing the lungs with all of this fluid you're keeping the fluid at bay you're opening up those bronchoconstricted uh, bronchioles to allow more oxygen to get to where it needs to go in the bottom of the alveoli for diffusion. That's it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next Tuesday.